Hi everybody, thank you for tuning in to another video on TK's Tech Corner. Today we're going to be looking at Razer's new Android gaming controller, uh, which is the Razer Kishi V2. It's the second version or second iteration of the uh, Kishi controller. Uh, the first one is here and we'll compare these in just a bit. Um, we're going to go ahead and crack this open, um, see what the key differences are between this one and the first version and we're going to test it out on this device here which is the Samsung Galaxy Fold 3 um, and the reason why um, we're going to be testing today is because the old one doesn't support uh, as many devices as this potentially can just due to the actual shape of the phone mount here so we'll go ahead and compare that in a bit let's go ahead and get this out of the box first um, and then we can take a better look at it now whilst I'm opening this up apparently they've got a new updated app um, which I have gone ahead and installed to save a little bit of time. It's called Razer Nexus um, And it does say that on the box as well. We'll just take a quick look at the box before I open this up Just so you can see that there um, what, what are they advertising? They're advertising ergonomic design and um, the designs changed slightly the back the back extendable plate here um, This bridge that they're calling it here the extendable bridge is a, looks like a solid bridge now and um, the old one was an elastic band strap um, and then um, maybe it's going to open up a little bit wider to support larger devices more comfortably fitting in. Um, you've got these customizable triggers here now. So um, before you've got the standard sort of layout with the uh, bumpers, the shoulder buttons and then the triggers. You've now got these two additional programmable buttons. So we'll see how that works as well. Um, and an overall very clean looking design by the looks of it on the picture anyway. Um, and some additional buttons on the face as well. So let's go ahead and get it out, see what it's all about. Right, there it is. Um, now, first thing I notice immediately as I open it up, other than the very, very clean look that I'm noticing here, is uh, it's definitely got a solid bridge at the back versus the soft one that was on the back of this device. As you can see, yeah, this stretchy thing going on, which it wasn't bad, it did the job, but I think a little parts of this while you're playing got a little bit uncomfortable you're trying to find where to put your fingers overall though I'll be honest it wasn't bad it was still probably one of the best options for uh, the traditional sort of smartphone and um, this here oh now I'm just going to talk about the feeling of these switches in a minute but I'm noticing something very special there um, this here is uh, I think it's a bit lighter this was a bit this now now this feels all of a sudden this feels a bit bulky right so immediately, I, I don't know actually, maybe there's nothing in it, maybe just a tiny little bit lighter or maybe it's just me getting excited over a new device, I don't know. But one thing you notice immediately is the click on those buttons. So I don't know if you can hear that when I hold it close to the mic. The old one didn't have that. The old one had a very, and I, I, I did mention this on the video when I reviewed this, is the buttons felt a bit spongy to me. I mean, they were okay, right? But just a little bit too spongy now the new ones have, they've they've got they've definitely upgraded the buttons on there so these these are using different micro switches all together and you can notice that straight away the triggers feel a lot lighter um than the old triggers the old triggers and if you can hear that i don't know if that's just through using it a little bit too much or what but, or this, the left one's a lot quieter than the right one but that's the sound of the triggers for you and listen to the new ones the new ones are completely silent you can you can't hear them you can only hear them if I press it hard enough you'd hear it where it reaches its uh, it limit so very very quiet triggers and then the micro switches even the the ABXY buttons here um, their micro switches have been replaced and you can hear the clicky feedback on those the analog triggers now these are to me they look exactly like the Nintendo switch ones in fact I'm actually just going to pause this video for a second and go ahead and get the Nintendo switch controller Right, so I'm back, I've got the switch, and we're just gonna compare this quickly. So, the buttons feel a lot more like the switch one, they respond a lot more like the switch one, but look at the analog stick. Can you see that there? That's pretty much identical. Size-wise, it, look, it, it, it looks like it's just exactly the same analog stick. I mean, there's, look at that, there's really not much in it. That, to me, it looks almost identical. It's almost like they use the same part, and that's a good thing. Because after playing, I don't know, 120 to 130 hours, probably people have played more of Zelda on this exact controller here. 
it can't be that bad, can it? Shows you how comfortable these are. These analog sticks are so, so comfortable. Your fingers rest very, very nicely on them. Um, they, they're very nice and grippy. You don't find your thumbs losing traction on them. I definitely don't anyway. And from a clickiness perspective, I think they're, they're exactly the same, right? So the face buttons here, um, these have definitely got micro, different sorts of micro switches. These are a bit more clicky buttons, but then you'd not be using these menu and uh, snit screenshot type buttons very often. The D-pad is on a whole new level. The old D-pad was very clunky. Um, and I think again, I mentioned that in my review versus the new D-pad, which has got an awesome, awesome response on on those uh, on those directional buttons there. So immediate resp immediate sort of uh, view on this is this is nice. One one thing I don't know if it's going to be a problem or not is a I don't know if the fold's going to fit in there with the case on or not, and I'm hoping it does because I don't want to keep popping the case on or not. Is the the actual micro uh, so the USB C connectors on the right hand side means the phone's going to sit into this this way around. Now, I don't know which way is better because if it was like this, it would be top heavy. If it's like this, it would be bottom heavy. But then to be honest, when you're holding it like this and naturally you're angling it towards you, I think the fact that the weight, the additional weight is on the bottom might be better than the weight being on the top. Because when I reviewed the game, so S2 or the X2 controller, you may have seen the video for that. Um, the USB-C ports on the left-hand side and the phone, um, when it's mounted in there, is mounted like this and then you're getting this sort of top heavy thing going on and I did find it a bit top heavy um, and not so comfortable so we'll see how it is from a spring loading perspective this is nice and light so it's not like I'm having to apply a lot of force to get this stretching in and out where it's a lock it's stretching back in itself and then over here you've got this sort of uh, a it's not really rubberized these sort of uh, ridges here that are effectively are going to help you to line up your phone I think now in the box here, what you can see, and I don't know what these are, and put them out and find out, is it looks like some sort of a an adapter. I don't know where that's going to fit in just now, though we will figure it out. Um, but it looks like it's going to fit somewhere there, I'm guessing. Um, again, we will figure it out. I'll play around with it or I'll check the instruction manual to see what it's for. But there's two of them. Um, so there's one like this. And there's one with a hole on it, so let me just hold them close to the camera. And immediately I can't figure out what they're going to be for. And you can see the two adapters there. Right, so we'll keep them aside in the box. I'm just going to go ahead and check what else is in the box quickly before we move it aside and try and fit the phone into there. Because that's really what we want to see and that's probably what you're here to see as well. So the Razer Kishi V2 instruction manual. I'm sure this is going to show me what those adapters are for. Um, and if we can find what they are for, I will show you before I proceed. Um, no. It's interesting because it doesn't show me what I'm supposed to do with those covers, so we'll just figure it out. It's not going to be the biggest problem to figure out what it is for. Um, aha, there it is. So, cleaning, changing the rubber cushion, so it's actually allowing you oh these are oh, okay fine so these are replacements for the rubber cushion now that's probably if you're using a thicker device maybe so i think this actually clips off is, is what i'm seeing so this thing here kind of clip off now if the fold three doesn't fit in with the case on i think the idea is i can i can put this on this is a lot thinner as you can see then that thing that's currently already on there so that will allow the phone to fit in with the case on, which is a really good thing. And then this one will fit on this side. So this is to put thicker devices in. That's ex exactly what they've done there. Um, now, how easy it's gonna be to remove or not, we'll figure it out, but I'm not gonna try and remove it until I've tried the phone in. So let's go ahead and get this phone in first. Or try and get the phone in first and see what happens. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and try it with the case. I'm going to just stretch this out. Now you can see it's definitely stretching out a really, really good amount there. Um, and I've got a feeling the phone's actually just connected. Yeah, I think it has. I think it's actually, yeah, the connector's in. Whether it's actually, and it's working, it's definitely working because as you can see there, it's immediately on. 
Now the phone is, this is set up is a little bit bottom heavy, as I said, nothing you can really do about that. Um, could you play in closed mode? No. Do I have to actually take the rubber bumpers off at all? No, I don't. So I'm using the, uh, the um, Aramid, I think it's called Aramid carbon uh, fiber case for the Z Fold 3 and it's a very, very slim case. And as you can see there, right, that rubber mount is lined up perfectly with the bottom of the device. There's no force on it whatsoever. So thankfully I don't have to go through the process of changing um, these rubber mounts for for use with the case on. So in that case then we can just go ahead and straight get on with messing around with some games now. It was working a second ago, it's now no longer not working. I don't know if I've uh, done something there that I shouldn't have done. Uh, let's just go ahead and get it out and back in again. So that's out. It's going to go straight back in hopefully. I'm probably better off putting that side in again first to be honest. So I'm lining it up into the USB port. Scratching up my device whilst I'm doing it probably no doubt. And then once I've got the USB-C port in I'm just going to go ahead and pull this back and close that now again. I think it's in. The controller isn't working, so I th what I thought was working maybe isn't working. Maybe the C port is not making full contact, though it looks like it is. Um, so let's go ahead and just launch the app first. I have installed a new app. Let's see if the new app's uh, picking up the, contro the controller. It definitely doesn't seem like it's working, unfortunately, right? So I might go ahead and have to just change this thing. Um, so let's go ahead and do that because I, I don't think it's making full contact, unfortunately. I don't think the problem is the thickness. I think the problem actually is the fact that it's not going in all the way. Um, and for that, if I don't know if this is actually going to help because it looks like, yeah, it might do, it might do. Let's try it out. It's a bit thinner. Um, just got to figure out how to get this thing off. So I'm going to go ahead and just, there you go, I've managed to get it off, it wasn't too bad. I was lifted it up with my finger and I'm just pulling it out gently, I don't want to break it. There we go, and that is the uh, old one. Now let's just compare that to the, the replacement so you can see this one's a little bit thinner. So I think it might allow the USB-C connector just to go in a little bit more. Um, so let's go ahead and see how that works. In fact, before I do that, I'm just going to go ahead and plug plug it in to see if it's working without that, without the adapter in at all, because I might not even need to put anything in there. Let's have a look. It didn't look really. I, th I actually thought for a second it worked when I, when I plugged it on. Ah, there we go. So it is the contact. It wasn't making contact for me. Now you can see it is actually working. So. With that then, I should probably uh, try and put that new cover on, but before I do that, let's get out of my Tesco's club card and let's go ahead and uh, fire up the Game Pass app. Now you can see the control is definitely working um, and I don't know, let's go and test out Forza. Now again, hard, hard to describe other than what you can hear, the micro switches in these buttons really, really do feel very nice. Um, so we'll just go ahead and test out Forza quickly and then I'll go into the new Razer Nexus app and we can see what that's all about as well. So this is uh, streaming from the cloud, I'm not playing from the console so if there's a little bit of a lag it's going to be understandable but ultimately we just want to see how the controller functions. Now you can see it there, right? Gorgeous screen to play some Xbox on. Syncing some data. I think my son's been playing this and driving around in circles, so I don't know what car is going to be selected and what state it's going to be in. Um, well, let's go and have a look. Right, there we go. So,
Uh, I think I think this is about as good as it's going to get. Uh, it is great, by the way, for Xbox on the Galaxy Z Fold 3. Uh, now, again, yes, it's a little bit. It is a little bit um, bottom heavy, unfortunately. But look where my fingers are resting in here. This is a lot more comfortable. So now you've got this space here, right? So my fingers are actually resting here when I'm playing. So that is actually supporting. And, and I can use, I can hold it like this as well. So I can put use bottom, the bottom smaller fingers here for additional support, to support the bottom weight. But overall, it's actually quite comfortable. Now, if I was using a traditional device, three, you might not be using the Fold 3. I'm testing with the Fold 3 because it's, it's a lot nicer when the screen's open. You've got a really, really big screen to play on, right? But if I wasn't using something like the Fold 3 and I was using a traditional device, we'll just stick one in, just test it out in a minute, then it's probably going to be even nicer, right? It's going to be more balanced. What's that pile of plume of smoke coming from there? Look at that. Let's drive into the sand, it looks like a sandstorm. Let's drive into it, let's see what's going on there. Oof. I'm literally driving through a sandstorm. It's incredible. It looks great. Feels great. Response is f fabulous. Um, as you can see, you're going to get a little to a very, 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 very low latency because it's connected directly to the device. So no, no Bluetooth connectivity related latency to worry about at all here. The only latency I have to worry about here is anything I'm getting over X Cloud and uh, sorry yeah, Xbox. Uh, Xbox, the cloud gaming service, and to be honest, as you can see here, I'm sitting there. It feels like I'm playing on an Xbox on my hand. Uh, it feels great. Really, really, really big improvement on the controller overall, um, is, is what I can say. Um, switches, there's a day and night difference. The analog sticks, much, much, much better. Even there, you can see I press the analog stick in for the horn. Um, the, ca the controller is more comfortable even though I'm using uh, a large phone. So let's just go ahead and stop this for a second, right? Um, I can take a screenshot there, I suppose. Um, there's some additional buttons here, right? Let's go ahead and look at the app quickly before. Just gonna close that. I'm gonna go ahead and have a look at the new Razer app quickly. So the Razer Nexus app, um, allow Nexus to access Razer QCS, display over other apps, okay, fine, yeah. Um, and let's allow that to display over other apps. So we're effectively giving it the ability to appear on top. Um, and yes, it's a new app. There you go. So this is showing me games I've got installed on my device as well as which is this lot here. And then recommendations of other games that you can probably use with this controller. Um, so that's quite nice, um, Stardew Valley. Um, I don't know anything here I've got installed that I can try other than maybe probably Call of Duty, which I generally don't play with the with the physical game controllers. Um, but you get the idea, right? Now, if there's a settings uh, remapping, so here it's showing you that you can remap your buttons, which is nice. So let me just hold that closer so you can have a look at that. So the options to actually remap your buttons, A, B, X, and Y, and directional pads, and your um, your left and right bumpers, etc. And it's also showing you what you can do with, so you can, so what you're doing remapping wise is you're remapping these buttons. As I'm pressing them, you can see what's happening there, right? I can choose what to remap each of these two. So that's quite nice. Um, so as I select that, uh, you can't do all the buttons. Um, but what I can do is I can effectively remap these two to any any other button or function I want. Um, and you can also set it to nothing if you want as well. So nice little feature there um, to have these additional two buttons. 
Well, I hope you get an edge on some game, who knows. There we go, it's there. Let's go ahead and quickly put in a normal phone. Um, I just picked up the first old phone that came to my hand. Note 8 or something. Um, it's there. Get confused with the eight and between the eight and nine. Uh, so there we go. That's definitely on there. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and unlock that quickly. Now this is a lot more balanced now. Um, obviously feels a lot lighter as well than than having the Fold Three on there. No, no worry about being bottom weighted. Comfortable. My fingers are still resting there anyway. Definitely a lot more comfortable than the old device. So the old one being here, it's definitely a lot more comfortable than that was. Um, and uh, I think that's mainly due to do the, the again the sort of difference in the back here, right? So with this one, a it's a bit fiddly to open up. Stretching large devices, you really had to stretch the Note 10. When I was trying to get the when I used to get the Note 10 in now, this I had to keep taking off the cover, which was the first pain. I don't need to take off a cover anymore with this, which is great. As long as it's not a super bulky cover, it's going to work. Um, and uh, it's uh, it's a lot more comfortable because of the actual design. So this was very unsymmetric, all right. You can see there. So your finger didn't have a consistent. Your fingers didn't have a consistent place to rest at the back. So for short gaming, it was fine. But for long periods, it did used to get a little bit uncomfortable. Um, this one, I think I'll be using this even more. To be honest, I mean, I did use this one a fair amount, but I think I'll be using this one even more. Um, you can see it's working there already. Uh, and uh, th th what, I, what I wonder is, I wonder if after a little while they'll release another version of the V2 which is branded for the Xbox, like they did with this Kishi V1 they, re they released the first iteration of it which had the A, B buttons with a different way around thankfully these ones are in the same, um, d they're, they're labelled exactly the same as they are for the Xbox and the colours, this hasn't got the colours on fine but you know, you had the Xbox uh, guide button on there, and 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 the Xbox menu and um, switch apps buttons, and and they have they have lost that in this, and maybe they're going to keep it generic, or maybe they're going to release an Xbox branded one to earn some more money. Who knows? I wouldn't be surprised, right? Even here, firing up Xbox Game Pass. Uh, don't expect a great experience on this old phone. To be honest, it's definitely not going to be using Wi-Fi six, so the wireless experience might be might not be so great, and I might not go ahead and start actually playing something. Well, I might. Who knows? Um, but there you go. So I can resume playing Forza on there. Let's see how that goes. Uh, overall, though, it does feel like it's definitely feeling a lot less bulky. Um, now I can go straight back into my game here, as I was, as you can see there as well. And the volume down is a bit too loud. And there you go again, so back in on the game, back in on the action. Even this, I mean, you could probably just leave this old phone in here. Just use it as a as your you know, Xbox lying on your desk if you want it. Poor Xbox, it's great. I don't know if it's just me, I'm noticing a tiny bit more lag here, it's probably due to the Wi-Fi connection on this phone versus the Z Fold 3, the Wi-Fi 6 does make a massive, massive difference, um, but then I, I suppose this would just effectively buffer down a little bit more and, and try and give you the best gaming experience. Overall though, this is fully playable um, as, as it was on the Fold 3, though I do prefer gaming on there because of the bigger, bigger screen inside, so you can see the difference, you know, it's huge. The difference is huge. So there we go. Um, this video has dragged on for quite quite a lot longer than it probably needed to. Um, I'll quickly just look around the device and see what else is on there, just for good measure. Um, it's probably better to pull the USB-C connected side off first. Right, there we go. And we can see on the bottom, there is a pass-through charging port. I'm not sure, I haven't seen on the documentation whether or not it supports fast charge or not, so it would be good to test that out. Um, and if you've got questions on that, you want to know if it works or not, let me know. I haven't got a charger to hand here, so I can't plug it in and test it. Um, in the same manner as the old one, they've got these sort of vents here, which is effectively to pass through audio from your device. So if you've got bottom mounted speakers on your phone, which most of them do these days, I think, then at least that will channel some audio through to towards your your um, position, which is you're, you're looking at the screen, it will be directing the sound towards you. 
Uh, other than that, there you go. From a portability perspective, I think the old one probably wins a little bit because it folds in, uh, it squashes down to a bit of a smaller overall footprint. So you can see there, this one's a bit longer. So, you know, I don't know if, I'm, sh I'm guessing there'll be some third party cases that you can buy to store this in. Or maybe you can just store it in the box if you're traveling around, keep it safe. The box isn't much bigger than the device to be honest anyway. Um, and what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna go ahead and just quickly squeeze this uh, bumper replacement on. And then I'll end the video. So you can just see me putting that on. That thin adapter is now fully on. Um, though it's not, I don't know if it's gonna help or not though, because it's not, um, let's, let's just put the Fold 3 in there and just test it quickly so you can, you can have all the answers before I end the video. Does it work or does it not work is the question. And I'm hoping the answer is going to be yes, it works. No, it doesn't work. Even if I squeeze, so you can see when I push it in the light didn't come on. So if you want to use the Fold 3 with the case, you can, but you just don't need to have an adapter in there. And it really isn't a problem because the device is still getting all the support it needs anyway. The problem it's causing is with that on there, it, what, what's happening is if I'm taking this off, right, there is, just quickly on this one, when I remove this adapter, this effectively has a little lump around the charging port you can see there. There, that little lump there, right? So it's lumped out a little bit. That's good because that lump is is actually going into this little indentation in my case here. So that's allowing that C port to make full contact with the port on the phone. And that's why it works with without the adapter, but doesn't work with the adapter. So Razer, if you can make another adapter that we can use with the cases on, that leave that little push, pr protruding part of the C port free then please do so because once you've done that, this thing is absolutely perfect. And the good thing is anyone can really make an adapter for this, maybe a little bit of 3D printing or whatnot. Um, but there you go. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Hope you found this comparison useful between the Razer Kishi V1 and the Razer Kishi V2 and also how much it compares to the Nintendo Switch controller there. Um, thank you very much for watching. Take care and I'll see you in the next video.